The 2010s were a weird time. I think we can all agree on that. I mean, we were so naive at the time that we thought 2016 was the worst year ever, and we actually believed that 2013 would be the end of the world. But by far the weirdest and most out-of-pocket thing to come out of the 2010s was Nightcore, a genre so bizarre that it went into hiding for years and has entirely changed its identity. In fact, I bet most of you watching have heard a Nightcore song recently and just don't know it. That would probably be because of TikTok. Somehow TikTok manages to come up in every video I make, but it's not really a coincidence incidents considering most of the current trends in the last few years have come out of TikTok, and Nightcore's revival is not any different. Okay, but what even is Nightcore? How did it become mainstream again? Why do I think it's so bad? Honestly, those are all really great questions, and my plan for this video is to try my best to answer most of those. But to understand what Nightcore is, first we need to go back to where it started. Apparently the first trace of Nightcore on the internet is two high schoolers who had an idea for a school project. The idea was to take existing dance music and speed it up, and then also increase the pitch of it. And we're not talking by like, a little bit of a speed increase, we're talking to lightning fast BPMs of 160 to 180, and if you aren't familiar with tempo markings, here's 100 BPM. And here is 180. But the story doesn't just end there. These two students went on to make a 13-track album for their school project, and then three more albums after that by 2003. The name of their group? Nightcore, aka The Core of the Night. These students were well aware of their shtick, once being quoted as saying, we mix techno dance music into faster and happier sounds for your listening pleasure. So they made it clear that they didn't believe they were breaking any crazy new ground, and it wasn't them that made the idea blow up. It was the people who heard their music. It started with people taking their music, which started exclusively on CDs, and uploading it to LimeWire, a popular music sharing site for the time. Then it transitioned to people doing their own Nightcore remixes of the songs that they wanted to. It's actually collectively assumed that in the early days of Nightcore remixing, the two big superpower genres were obviously electronic music, but also anime soundtracks. Apparently fans would upload the songs in order to dodge copyright laws and be able to listen to their music without consequences. Now upon hearing about this, I know what a lot of you are thinking, and that is whether or not that explains why there is always, and I mean always anime girls associated with Nightcore. And honestly, it does explain it, but it also doesn't. I'd love to say it was the motivated fans just trying to stick it to the man by listening to their favorite songs no matter what and pairing the anime imagery with it because what else would they put there? But that would be way too pure for the internet if we're gonna be honest. In reality, some interesting characters took this origin story and used just the female anime character's art to clickbait their songs. But you know, that aside, let's get back to the music itself. As years passed, the selection of genres that remixers would take from expanded from just electronic music into rock and pop music, and this is where Nightcore really got shot directly into the stratosphere. Nightcore edits of pop songs, rebellious rock songs, heck, even a song from Victorious saw tens of millions of views on YouTube alone. And so from the looks of it, Nightcore was here to stay. But just like with every fad, those damn kids lost interest. So for years, no one cared about Nightcore at all until TikTok, and then the genre took an unexpected turn. In the time that Nightcore was dead, rap became the most popular genre on the internet, and what happens with people like a genre is they mess with it. And that is essentially what people did, but they didn't even know it was Nightcore at the time, calling all of these remixes simply sped up versions. And that's kind of where we are today, with Nightcore artists either holding their ground and releasing the classic remixes, or marketing sped up rap songs or indie rock songs as sped up and not Nightcore at all. Okay, so now that you know what Nightcore is and where it came from, we can accurately go through and listen to some of these songs for what they are, if you will. So where are we going first? Well, I think really the only place to start is where the Nightcore fans probably want me to go, and that's some electronic music. The song I want to go with here is Spectre by Alan Walker, the Nightcore remix. So this is pretty far out of my wheelhouse, but I'm going to try my best to give you guys an honest analysis of what's going on here. Obviously, Spectre was a famous song on YouTube and the internet in general, and the remix that this song is actually speeding up also got a decent amount of popularity over the years. So the subject matter here is pretty important to the internet's history. So this Nightcore remix's goal is to heighten the hyped up and energetic emotion that the original preyed on, and it does about as good of a job as you could expect. I think here is really where we see the crux of this subgenre, because 99% of the time, these remixes are going to do that exact same thing, as in heighten or shift the emotions involved with the song of choice, not conjure up any new ones. And so it's at this point that it is probably reasonable to address the elephant in the room, which is how what I just described, heightening already existing emotion in the given song, appeals to 
basically exclusively teenagers and kids. Hence the title of this video, because yes, I obviously had a few Nightcore songs in my rotation as a kid, but I know that's a shared experience for a lot of people. Anyway, the electronic music out of the way, we can move on to something a little more new and popular. A Nightcore remix that everyone should remember is Centuries by Fall Out Boy, The Nightcore Remix. I don't know where they got the idea for this remix, but it is definitely the biggest example of pop music Nightcore, so let's definitely have a listen. So yeah, we are still holding strong with that same concept as before, nothing crazy groundbreaking here, but still some changes in energy for sure. The once rock drums now appear as EDM drums, pounding away in your ears at blinding speeds, and the various percussion effects that would usually appear in the back of the song's soundscape are now brought way forward, mostly because of your brain's bias towards the more energetic feeling that a higher tempo brings. What's interesting about this and many of the other Nightcore pop songs is that the instrumental melody is completely the same as before. The piano in centuries here is basically identical in feeling and tone, which is impressive considering how much the drums changed. Okay, so far, we've looked at an electronic pop song which went for all hype and energy, and a pop song which went for all empowering and driving emotion. But now, we're fast forwarding to today, where the trend is to speed up rap songs. Okay. This is the first one I really like, and it's Wish by Diplo and Trippy Red, the sped up version. This is also our first example of Nightcore advertised as not Nightcore, which is probably a good PR move by Diplo, to be honest. But let's not get it twisted, this is still Nightcore, so it's still a little more hyped up version of the original Wish. Difference here is that Diplo's bird-like counter melody here actually blends together really nicely with the reverb piano. And the white noise-like background of the song really doesn't get in the way of any melody or any existing parts of the song. In my opinion, the more vaguely layered sound of a rap beat actually receives the Nightcore treatment a little bit better. All right, so there we go. That's three Nightcore songs from three genres that represents most of the Nightcore that's come out over the last decade. But what can we conclude from looking at these Nightcore songs? Well, obviously we can conclude that it's not the deepest genre of all time, and it doesn't have as much innovation as some other genres, but the biggest one I want everyone to remember is that this music is intended for kids. Whether we like it or not, Nightcore is going to stick around. I mean, producers are always going to mess with songs they like, and people will always listen to it. At the end of the day, we have to remember that this music isn't intended for your dad, it's intended for your little cousin who can handle a screaming high BPM and a squeakier voice. And honestly, that's fine by me. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about Nightcore. If you enjoyed this video, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. If you want to join the Discord server that I just made, the link will be down in the description. And if you want to catch me on stream, I've been streaming every day of the week. So hope to see you there. Let's go. Huh? Back in the mail, it's gone. Uh -huh. She like I smell cologne. Yeah. I just found a deal. I'm on.